Fear holds you back, stops you, lets you not move forward. Fear is an identity crisis, a poverty mindset, not knowing who you are or what you are capable of. The Bible talks about fear and how the enemy strategically sets you up to lock you up in your own fear so that you are not able to move forward. My message today is about facing the enemy and we're talking about fear and it is so easy to creep in. It even talks about the Bible at that situation that when they were given talents and one of the people that were given a talent just buried it out of fear to lose it instead of to start to use it and make a difference. The amazing thing is this last week I actually experienced fear in a new way. And it kind of struck me, I didn't see it coming like that. But I was at home and we had an incredible meeting that was just totally of God, it was awesome. And I remember that night saying, enemy, I command you to leave and not backlash me on this. So I said, none of that. And while the next day everything seemed fine, the next night when a dear friend of mine came by and picked up her children, that I was taking care of for that day. And she came by and picked them up. And then I said, wait, there's something different about you. Are you okay? And she's like, yeah, yeah. It's kind of that shruggish feeling, you know, it's like, are you all right? And, and she kind of answered a little funny and said, you have been kind of different for a couple of days. Are you okay? Is there anything going on? And she says, oh, I can talk about it right now. So she left me hanging and I was like, ah, So I went to her home later and her children were with there and she says, I can't talk about it right now. And then I called her husband and said, are you guys okay? She says, he says, I think we are. And the interesting thing is that the sudden light fears that were underneath inside of me at that moment started popping up. And from the next moment, really not knowing what was going on, I was fearing for their marriage. I was fearing for the children who was gonna cope with the marriage if it would fail. I was thinking about divorce and I went through this whole scenario. And while thinking about all those things, knowing really nothing, fear started to set in more and more with the consequences of the result of the fear that I really did not know that existed, that I ended up imagining why because of my own issues in the past that I had worked through that I did not want to happen to anybody else. I made it my responsibility, I made it my concern, and next I took ownership of it. And everything I intended to complete that night was put in a huge halt. And then all of a sudden, the Lord in this quiet, gentle voice said, why don't you just pray? I was like, yeah. And the moment I started praying, I became aware of this fear. And when I saw the fear, I declared it to stop. I took ownership of canceling it. And I said, fear, you're out the door. God, I declared that what you have done in my life, the experiences that you have given me, from restoring my marriage, from giving me miracles, from healing me from an eating disorder. You can have this in this situation right now and I will no longer give in to the imagination of the fear that is trying to destroy me right now in the name of Jesus. And it literally just left. And from that moment on, I was able to function because I declared it, believed it, and focused on what God had done for me before that he was going to do for me now too. And that, my friend, is what I want you to experience, to receive, and to live in it. And I'm going to give you an extreme example out of the Bible how fear was trying to creep in. The whole army fell for it except one person. How did it start? By the enemy, the devil, invading the territory of those that were trying to follow God. And it starts in 1 Samuel chapter 17, and this is what it says. Now the Philistines gathered their army for battle, and they were gathered at Soko, which belongs to Judah, and they camped between Yoke Soko and Aseka in Epis Damin. Do you notice it's the Philistines that entered Judah. It's the Philistines, it's the enemy that entered into the promised land. So it's the enemy actually that is taking territory. 
Saul, King Saul and the people from Israel notice it, they catch on to it and they decide to go in an encounter attack. You have to go in an encounter attack. You can't just let them invade you. You have to put a stop to it. And that's what they did. They showed up. They move forward. Now on one side of the mountain on the, in the, is, is the one side, the Philistines. There is a valley between. And on the other side are the Israelites. And they're both in battle area, ready to fight. Nothing wrong at this point. But what happens ne next is what sets it up. It says in verse 4, Then a champion came out from the armies of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits at span and span. That's like nine feet tall. He, this guy was huge. He was wearing and carrying an armor that was absolutely huge, absolutely incredible huge. And they see this huge guy and he starts taunting them. And he says he stood and shouted loud to the ranks of Israel and said to them, why do you come out to draw up in a battle array? In other words, you are already defeated. Am I not the Philistine and you servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will become your servants. But if I prevail against him, nine feet tall, huge armor, raised to be a warrior. But if I come against him and kill him, then you will become my servants. And you look at the story here. You see intimidation. You see a loud roaring. You see screaming. You see this guy standing tall. And he wants to have a one-on-one -on -one fight. And the winner takes over. That is so typical in how Satan will work against you in your life, against your fear. It starts with a little nothing thing. And then all of a sudden it becomes this huge battle inside of you. And you're like, what is going on? Intimidation, size, big, it all comes together. What is it that you need to do in how to fight back? And as you look at this, you start saying, whoa. Again, the Philistine said, I defy the ranks. It will put you down. It will neglect you. It will try to destroy you. I will defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we might fight. And then when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and in great afraid. They were in great dismay. How do you fight? Stay tuned. We will be right back. There are many times that while I was mentoring in juvenile hall that I would hear the word, shut up. And I was like, what? And I was just like, what are you? And it kind of threw me, right? But it wasn't a negative, it was actually a positive. And I am here to tell you right now, shut up. He did what? And we're talking about God right now. We are going to start radio. We want to bless you. We want to encourage you. And even if you're on the road or just at home doing cleaning or whatever, we now want to minister to you in a brand new way. And it's not like we asked for it. It was basically offered to us. So what is that going to mean? That you're going to hear real new situations that will encourage you, that will bless you, that will strengthen you, and that will help you. And that will help you to see that you too can start living the abundant life and no longer have to stay stuck. BarbTV.org to find out how. So the enemy invades you, creates fear, like it says right here. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. There is a huge danger when you start looking at what you see instead of looking up. And it was just not him, it was the entire camp. They were all greatly afraid. When fear sets in, if you don't see what God is capable, it will destroy you. And that's exactly what is starting to take place here. But then there's hope in an extremely unusual way. Because it says in verse 14, David was the youngest, the youngest of eight children. Now the three oldest followed Saul. But Saul went back and forth from Saul to from, but David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's flock at Bethlehem. 
the Philistine came forward morning and evening. Now, Jan, I want you to think about this. Morning and evening for 40 days and took his stand. If you for 40 days in a row are afraid, the fear will keep growing at you. And you start praying out of a negative way. You start praying being intimidated instead of praying in victory. And when you pray that way, you have your eyes on the enemy, on the fear, instead of what God has in mind for you. There is a huge problem with that because you pray feeling defeated already. And those prayers, my friend, are not of God. And that was happening here for 40 days. It's a huge issue. And then right after that, God brings the answer because he still listens to the prayers. But do not pray in defeat. Declare. And I'll show you how that goes next. Because then it says, So David arose early in the morning and left his home, left the flock with a keeper, and took the supplies and went as Jesse his father had commanded him. And he came to the circle of the camp while the army was going out in battle array, shouting the war cry. Now this is a youth, a young man. Israel and the Philistines drew up in battle. And I almost laugh at this because they shout in victory as they move forward. But they function in defeat. And fear will try to destroy you and get you stuck. They had been stuck for 40 days already. Then David let it left his baggage in the care of the baggage keeper and ran to the battlefield. He's excited. He's young. He doesn't really know a whole lot about fear yet, or does he? And entered in order to greet his brothers. As he was talking with them, behold, the champion, the Philistine from Gath, named Goliath, was coming up from the army of the Philistines. And he spoke the same words, and David heard them. He sees the reaction, but something has changed. Because fear when you're afraid will put you stuck and will get you into hiding and will help you stuck in a trance that you can't even move anymore. Except there is one option. And it says this, And they saw the man, and they fled from him, and were greatly afraid. So not only are they standing anymore, shouting a battle cry, saying, We can do this. We can lose this. We can get this. We are going to win. For example, I am afraid of getting sick because I'm way too heavy. I'm going to do this. And the next day, Bang, you felt same for the same trap. And they ran away greatly afraid. Fear gains. Fear actually have you go backwards instead of forward. I have a dear friend of mine who made a huge mistake. A long time ago, she had an affair. She never told her husband. And she made all kinds of mistakes. This happened like over 20 years ago. And then it happened again. And she has been living in fear now for over 25 years and is getting sickness after sickness and issue after issue because of the fear that she is struggling with. What would it take for her to break that off? And I told her, you have exposed what has hidden to be able to go to the truth, to start reaping in and hold on to the blessings of God. And David saw this. It even says this in the Bible in Proverbs 28, verse 13. It says, He who conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will find compassion. You have to change. You have to move forward. You have to break loose because if you stay in hiding, it sets you up for failure because the enemy will use it as a loophole against you, bring fear inside of your life and it will trip you up. It does not work like that. So if there is anything that you're hiding from, no matter what it's the consequences, expose it so you no longer have to look constantly over your shoulder being afraid and running from truth. And that's what happened here. And David noticed they were afraid. David noticed they were running. And he starts to question the people. And he says, for who is this uncircumcised Philistine 
that he should taunt the armies of the living God in verse 26 on the B side. And he says, don't you guys see? This is unacceptable. But who is this young guy to tell an army that has been trained, that knows how to fight, that knows what to do, to tell this young guy, you are not doing it right. You, you need to do this different. What's wrong with you guys? And they're looking at him and say, who are you to talk to us that way? We've been here for 40 days. You don't even know what you're talking about. But David keeps questioning. David keeps asking questions. <coughs> David is not afraid. How did that happen? And then he keeps questioning. And this is where Satan will show up and mess with you. And yet we can see because his brother says the following. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men and said, Eliab's bringer, let me repeat this to make it clear, 28. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the man and said, Eliab's anger burned against David. And he said, why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? He's putting him down. I know your insolence and the wickedness of your heart. Whoa, you're talking to your brother here. For you have come down in order to see the battle. You catch this? Belittling, put down, and focusing out of his own fear and wanting to look good and putting his brother down, saying, who are you? You've not been here. You don't know what we've come through. You don't know what we're talking about. Who are you? And David responds with the following. But David said, what have I done now? Seems like this has happened before. And the enemy will constantly, fear will constantly beat you up and turn you down to keep you as little as possible. But guess what? You have a choice. And so did David. Stay tuned. Hi everyone. I just want to encourage you to check out our website, barbtv.org. Look at some of what Barb Marshall does. Look at some of the topics that she speaks on and invite her to be your guest speaker at your next event. Again, please go to barbtv.org. How often have you been intimidated, put down, and when you finally say, I'm gonna do something about it, that it seems to even get worse instead of better. Saul, King Saul hears about David questioning all over the army asking questions, asking what's coming out of it. And David is called in front of Saul, this little young man, you know, that, that, that is a good looking guy, but he's definitely not trained to be a soldier. And then Saul asks him questions. David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail on account of this Philistine on you, on him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistines. <laughs> it's almost humorous if you really think about it. It was like, you, you? How can you fight this nine foot guy? Our whole land is at stake of this. Who do you think you are? Then Saul said to David, you're not able to do this. This is how the enemy works. Friends, your own side, people will start saying, you can't do this, you're gonna fail. And it's gonna cost us even more. And it says, you can fight this guy. He has been a warrior and you're just a youth. But David responds to Saul and says, when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went out after him and attacked him and rescued it from his mouth. And when he rose up against me, I seized him by his beard and struck in him and killed him. David went after a lion. He went after a bear, pulled it out of their mouth. The animal stood up tall and went down. When you are afraid, Look at what God has already done in your life and use that as the power of the testimony in how to move forward and how to fight the battle. And the battle is already won when you start looking at Jesus into his eyes instead of all the things that are going on in your surroundings. This is amazing. He says his credentials and Saul believes it. He says, your servant has killed both lion and bear, and I will do the same with this uncircumcised Philistine. Since he has taunted the armies of the living God, 
Jesus, I mean, right now, David stood up for God. The rest of the army believed the enemy. Then David is put on into the armor of God, in the armor of Saul. He puts it on. He covers himself with it. And it's just not working. He's never worn that much armor. And he's, I can just see him kind of stumbling. And he tells Saul, Saul, I can't do this. Let me fight God. Oh, sh shush. Not God. Let me fight the Philistine with what God has equipped me with. When you fight your giants, when you fight your enemy, use what God has already given you. And Saul agreed. He could see God at work there. David girded his sword over his armor and he could not function. He took it off and then in verse 40 it says, he took his stick in his hand and chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's back, which he had even in his pouch and his sling was in his hand. And he approached the Philistine. Then the Philistine came and approached David with the shield bearer in front of them, intimidation all the way, looking huge, looking impossible, but God can do what is impossible. When the Philistine hooked, looked and saw David, he, said, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy with a handsome appearance. Then the Philistine said to David, for am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David. People will curse you. People will yell at you in the middle of the battle. People will get loud in your face. And even the people around you will not believe in you. But guess what? If God's on your side, nothing will stop it. The Philistine also said to David, Come to me and I will give you flesh to the birds of the sky and the beasts of the field. And here you see David declaring God's word against the fear that the entire camp is encountering. And he stands strong because he stands on the experience that God had already given him with the lion and the bear. And it says here, then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. And after that, David declares what he's going to do with this Philistine. As they go towards each other and the enemy, the Goliath faces David, nine foot to young youth, and they encounter each other. This is what takes and what happens next. And it says, then it happened in verse 48. When the Philistine rose and came and drew near to David, that David ran quickly. He had to go to action. Then David ran quickly the battle line to the bat towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand into his back and took it from a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. He had only one chance. And the stone sank into his forehead so that he fell on his face to the ground. What? A hit that must have made. Then David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and he struck the Philistine and killed him. Wow. His own army did not believe in him. His king, he was the only thing he had. His enemy taunted him and laughed at him. It was one against all. But because he did not give in to fear, he chose the living God. And when you choose the power of God, nothing can stop it. It says in Isaiah 41, in verse 10, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And my friends, I encourage you right now to read Psalm 56. 
believe it's Psalm, Psalm, yes, Psalm 56. And you read the pain, you read the agony, but you also will see the tools, how God is going to show you how to deal with fear. Because when God is for you, no one can stop it. We want to minister to you. Will you call us and contact us? Go to barbmarshall.com or barbtv.org or call us 855-515-5550. I believe so. And know this, when God is for you, fear has got to go. Command it to leave and know that God is bigger. And when you let go of fear, like David showed you and taught you how to do it, whatever tries to stop it, God will help you. God will show you the way. Do not get intimidated. Do not let it stop you. And know this, that God loves you and will help you to be in full victory. Declare it, receive it, believe it, and know it. Call us, 855-515-5550 or barbtv.org. God loves you, and so do I. The Bible talks about fear and how the enemy strategically sets you up to lock you up in your own fear so that you are not able to move forward. Today, my marriage was restored. Wait a minute. I did recover from an eating disorder. Wait a minute. I have a bigger God than any fear in this world. But that's the moment you really should pray. And I said that moment, okay, I'm going to pray. The moment I started praying, I started realizing that I was focusing out of my own fears, which I had walked through in the past. She's now afraid of almost everything. Because once fear enters into you, it will grow, not just into one area, but in many. You ask him in your heart. You believe that he died on the cross, the Son of God. What are the things that we struggle with and the mistakes, things that we have made, made mistakes about. And then he rose from the dead. You confess what you have done wrong. And once you have that done, you have the power that God is inside your heart. Come.